There are two stories I never get tired of telling. One is how I met Jesus, and the other is how I met my wife. We've been married uh, 30 years, and we um, make a pilgrimage as often as we can to uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico. My, a lot of you know that my wife just loves turquoise, and um, several years back, we had went to look at some architecture up in Taos, and on the way, we saw some folks selling jewelry. They sell jewelry everywhere. This was by the Rio Grande there, and so we stopped, and we took a look at it. We met a real nice lady, and we ended up buying this bracelet. And this was something that my wife had wanted for a while, um, very typical of that area, and it went with some other jewelry she had, and so we bought it. The next year we went back, we met a guy, and every year we learn more, and he began to tell us that uh, they're having a hard time now because a lot of jewelry is coming in from places like the Philippines, and in particular, turquoise. So, on that same trip, we headed back to the Rio Grande there to see if we could find the lady. And on the way, my wife pulled off the bracelet, looked on the back, and it was from the Philippines. So we had traveled all the way to Santa Fe to get authentic jewelry, only to get a fake. When I was uh, 14 years old, I went to church camp and one night there was a, uh, a gentleman speaking. It was very emotional. One of the last nights, most of my friends went down to the front. I stayed at the top, waiting, waiting, waiting. I eventually went down. The guy asked me, do you want to go to hell? And I said, no. And he said, then repeat after me. And so I prayed with him. And when we got back, they said, hey, we've all been saved, and he has too. And they said, well, then you need to be baptized. And so they baptized me. So after that, I knew that uh, life should be different for me. This morning, I got out a songbook, and in that songbook, there was a song. And, and you wouldn't think that this was a terribly convicting song, but this song really, really got me. It was, turn your eyes upon Jesus. And in the chorus it says, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full into his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in light of his glory and grace. I have to tell you that after I repeated that prayer, I never lost my desire for the things of this world. I just gained an appreciation for religious things. That bothered me because basically... I I didn't want to go to a heaven that didn't have the things of this earth on it. I still had passion for the things of this earth. Some good, some not so good. But at the age of 21, I came to a real low point. And I was able to apply what I knew about the Word of God to a heart condition and accept the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. And after then... Man, then I turned my eyes upon Jesus. And some of the things that uh, I had learned about earlier, um, I was able to apply at that point. There was some scriptures in uh, Romans 3.10 and 3.23. It says this, And it is written, There is none righteous, no, not one. Yesterday we talked about excuses. And there's a thing that we do. We justify our actions. And just justifying our actions is a way of just taking care of things on the surface. Instead of actually having justification in our life, being justified by God, we, we justify with words and our mindset what we do. In, in verse 23 it says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You know you've come up short. You know that it's not working because what you do is you try to do good things. And you try to make up for it. And it doesn't work. So in your heart of hearts, you know that things aren't well. How did all this start? A couple more chapters later in 5.12 it says, Wherefore, as one man's sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. 
we we inherited this from Adam and we know we inherit things from our fathers um, that's pretty clear in the verse verses kind of preceding that it says but God commended his love towards us that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us and that's a beautiful thing and that's why we talk about the grace of God and how great he is and just how wonderful he is because even though we didn't deserve it he died for us now we see here in um, chapter 10 verse 9 it says if thou wilt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and shall believe in thy heart God has raised him from the dead thou shall be saved for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made 13 says whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved so at 21 years old I became very very aware of my sinful condition I knew I was not right I knew I was a fraud I knew that I needed help and it took me about three days to realize if I were to die tonight I, I have no assurance that I would be with the Lord tomorrow on that third night I got down on my knees and I poured my heart out to the Lord I can't tell you the exact words but I'm going to tell you that it went from my head to my heart my heart was broken and I came before him and I asked him to save me. Boy, a burden was lifted. A joy came over me. The next day I went to school and I had told everyone I could come in contact with about Jesus and my salvation. The funny thing about that is I was a part of a uh, religious college group there uh, on campus and they were trying to hush me because uh, uh, I'd already been a part of their group, but now I'd been saved and so I had religion, and now I had a relationship, and I'm telling you, having the relationship makes the difference. Now when we go back to Santa Fe, we don't buy fakes. We look for the real thing, and it's costly. I'm gonna tell you, it's very, very costly. These are Navajo pearls. Each one of these pearls is handmade. They put it in a dimple die, then they solder it together, then they string it. Six strings, all coming together. Tremendous amount of work. Your salvation was very costly. It's the real deal. If you don't have it, you got religion, it's a knockoff, it's fake. You might say, I'm not religious. Well, if you got secular humanism, that's still a form of religion. You need Jesus. We can justify what we do, or we can have the justification of the Lord Jesus Christ. May God bless you today, praying that you know, that you know, that you know, that you are saved. God bless you.